Hi everyone, it's Taryn. And Stella here from Maple University. Thanks for joining us. Today we'll be teaching you how to play Nussfjord. So hopefully you'll know how to play the game after watching this video. Stay tuned. Let's learn to play Nussfjord, game designed by Uwe Rosenberg and published by Lookout Games. And if you find value from this video later, please hit the like button, subscribe to us, hit the bell and leave your feedback in the comments for others to find. For now, let's get to the table. In Nussfjord, players are fishing companies attempting to strike it rich off the coast of northern Norway. Over seven rounds of play, players will manage the forests, manage their shares, construct boats and buildings, and work with the local village elders, all with the aim of scoring the most money and victory points. The player with the most points after seven rounds wins the game. To set up, each player chooses a colour and takes its three action discs, five shares, personal supply board, harbour board, and elders board. Place two shares on the share side and flip three over to the unissued share side. Give each player four forest tiles. Place a stack of two on the top space and then one on each of the bottom spaces on the right hand side of your board. In the middle of the table, place the action board which corresponds to your player count and add this imitation tile for a four player or five player game on the appropriate side. Find the elder cards which match your player count and then by the number in the bottom left corner place them on their appropriate spaces. Here for example you'd place number 1 on the bottom and 7 on top. At 5 players, cards 13 through 18 go face down under these packs. And at any other player count, unused cards go back to the box. Above the elders, place ships equal to the number of players plus 1 into each of the 3 ship slots. Choose one of the 3 decks of building cards, returning the other 2 to the box. From that deck, Separately shuffle the A, B and C buildings, then fill the A and B supply boards with face-up buildings from the relevant deck. Place the banquet table nearby, and then from lowest number to highest, fill a number of plates equal to one fewer than the number of players in the game, with one fish each. Finally, find the first player markers for your player count. Choose a first player and give that player the token that has the number 1 in one of the inner spaces of the tile. Distribute the others according to the numbers on the outside of the tile. So here this says 2 and 5 and so you would give the player on that side the one with rounds 2 and 5 in the middle. Among these tiles, these 7 rounds of the game will be counted out. Give the first player the ship token and you're ready to play. Nussfjord is played in seven rounds, and each round is played in three phases. First is fishing, where players gain and distribute fish according to their ships, elders, and shares. Second is the work phase, where players, one at a time, will take actions from the main board in attempt to try to build their engines and earn points. And third is the returning home phase, where players will retrieve their worker discs, the first player marker rotates, and any reset effect for the new round is resolved. Through the game, players will be trying to earn victory points, represented by the yellow number and star, and these can be gained by constructing boats or buildings, or earning shares. They can also be lost by having uncovered spaces, or unissued shares. Critically, players also will be gaining victory points for gold at a 1 to 1 ratio. Gold is needed as a resource to purchase some things in the game, but it will also be worth one victory point. So keep that in mind as you make any purchases or actions which will give or spend gold. The first phase of each round is the fishing phase, and here players will simultaneously earn fish based on their ships, elders, shares, and some other things that we haven't yet spoken about. As such, I'm going to skip this phase for now and come back to it later in the video. All that needs to be said here is that in the first round, each player will gain two fish into their personal supply and one fish into their reserve. 
A player's personal supply represents resources which the player currently owns and can spend on actions. The reserve is an area where players may build up resources, but they do not have access to those resources at this point. They can't spend them and they don't score for them. To ever gain access to the resources in the reserve, the player must take an action which transfers the reserve to the personal supply. The second phase is the work phase, and this is where most of the game will take place and where all the actions occur. Starting with this round's first player and going clockwise around the table, players will take it in turns to take a single action by placing a worker disc onto one of the action spaces on this board and then immediately resolving the action. Each space has a maximum occupancy for workers, which is indicated by this number in the top left corner. Once a space has that many workers, it is now blocked and no further workers can be placed there this round. A player is not allowed to place a worker on a space for the sole purpose of blocking it. The player must be at least able to partially resolve the action on a space to place there. And it is permissible for a player to pass if a player does not want to or cannot legally take any of the actions. Play continues around the table until each player has taken three turns for the round, even if that turn was to pass. So now let's look at the different actions. At plus one gold, simply add one gold to your personal supply. When you transfer reserve, move all resources that are currently in your reserve over to your personal supply, ready for use. When you serve fish, you can spend fish from your personal supply up to the banquet table in order to gain gold. You can sell to as many plates as you'd like in a single action, but you must start from the low numbered end and work your way up. For each plate you serve to, spend fish from your personal supply equal to the number on the plate, place one of those fish on the plate and then discard the rest. Then gain one gold. The eight fish this player had could have been spent in a single action to fill up these three plates and gain a total of three gold. We'll see how fish disappear from this table a little bit later in the video. Build a building allows you to build any one of the face-up building cards from the supply into your harbour board. Choose a building and then pay its cost in wood, fish and coins from your personal supply. Take the card from the board without replacing it and add it to an empty slot on your harbour board, covering the negative point. If the building has an immediate effect, resolve that now, otherwise you'll now have an ongoing passive effect or an end of game victory point objective. The next two actions relate to the game's share market, issue a share and buy all shares. When you issue a share, take one of your unissued shares and place it in this slot on the board. Then gain two gold. It's an important action to take because by removing the negative point on the unissued share and gaining two gold, this is a three point swing. However, this makes the shares available for other players to buy with the buy all shares action. The player taking this action must be able to afford all of the shares currently in this box at a cost of one gold each, with a one gold discount in rounds four and five and a two gold discount in rounds six and seven. This purchase would cost two gold in rounds one, two or three, and the player would take the shares and add them to their personal supply. The shares are each worth one point, same as the gold that was spent to buy them, unless you have a building that boosts the value. However, each share you own during each fishing phase is going to earn you a fish in income. The next three actions all relate to how you manage your forests and how you gain wood. These actions are deforest, thin out and reforest. To deforest, you remove any one forest tile from your board, and this can be a solo tile or a tile in a stack. Then gain five wood. To thin out, count the number of forest tiles you have on your harbour board, and then gain one wood for each, without removing any. To reforest, take two forest tiles and then place them in a stack onto an empty double space of your harbour board. How you manage your forests is a key decision for the game. 
As you remove forests and free up spaces, you'll have more space to place buildings, but more negative points if you can't get those buildings built. And this is the main way to gain wood in the game, so you need to make sure you have enough supply. Your personal supply can never hold more than 12 wood at a time, and any action you take which would go above that results in some wood being lost. The next action is to build a ship, and you pay the cost of the ship in wood, fish or coins, and then take the ship from the supply and add it from left to right on your fishing haul track. Ships are worth points and will increase the amount of fish you catch each round in the fishing phase. The total supply of each type of ship in the game is limited to the number of tiles present. Take note that the largest boat, the schooner, can be purchased for either wood and fish or coins. And you cannot purchase a ship which would go over the last light space on your fishing track. The last actions relate to the Elders, and there are two actions associated with the Elders. The first is to place a worker on this action space, take the top Elder from any Elder pile, add it to an empty space in your Elders row, and then optionally use that Elders printed action. The other option is to place a worker onto one of your Elders, and then use its printed Elder action. For both of these options, when you use the Elder, you must first take the highest numbered fish from the banquet table and place it on the Elder taking the action. In this way, you can see the economy for fish in the game. It doesn't cost you anything to take a fish from here in order to take an Elder action, but doing this makes the serve fish action more profitable for the next player. If the banquet table is empty, then you cannot use an Elder's action, although you can take one. If one of your Elders ever fills up with three fish for whatever reason, then you get to take one of those fish into your personal supply, and the other two are discarded. This gives you a small ongoing benefit if you feed your Elders. That covers all the different actions available in the game. In the 4 and 5 player game, there is also the imitation tile. At four players, one player can use this space per round to take one other action which is already blocked. While at five players, three players can use the imitation tile, each corresponding to a single column, to do one action in that column which is already blocked. You cannot imitate an action which is not at full capacity. Once all players have taken three turns, it's time for the returning home phase. Each player retrieves their workers from the board, the first player marker is given against the direction of play to the player who has the next round listed on their first player tile, and then any setup effect printed for the next round is resolved. All of these relate to introducing more buildings to the game. In round 3, you'll add more A cards to the board. And in round 5, you'll add more B cards. In both cases, stop once you've added as many as shown on the tile, or when the board is full, and note that there won't be any new A or B buildings added in a two-player game. Before round four, each player will draw a number of C building cards into a private hand. These cards all tend to give ways to score large numbers of victory points at the end of the game. In rounds four and five, a player who builds a building may choose to build either from the supply board or from the C cards in their personal hand. Finally, prior to round 6, all C buildings that players are yet to build from their hands are placed into a face-up display, making them available for all players to build during round 6 and 7. Play will then pass to the next round's fishing phase, and now we'll talk about the fishing phase in detail. Your company will catch a haul of fish based on the first visible number after your row of ships. You must then distribute these fish according to the priority shown on this section of your board. First, you feed your elders, giving each elder one fish from the hall. As before, if this brings an elder to a total of three fish, then you get one of those to your personal supply and remove the other two. Next, place a fish on each of your colored issued shares that is owned either by another player or by the main board. So here you would place a fish on this share, and these two shares owned by yellow. 
If you don't have enough for either of these steps, then you choose where to put the fish, but suffer no other penalty. Then, place a fish on each of your own shares, which you own. Any leftover fish are moved into your reserve, up to a maximum total reserve capacity of 8 fish. If this goes above the 8 fish, then discard any excess down to 8. Once all players have distributed fish, then players can take the fish off the shares that they own and move them into their personal supplies, ready to use this round. After 7 rounds, the game is over and proceed to final scoring. Gain or lose the points printed on each of your buildings, and gain points for each of your ships. Gain a point for each issued share that you own, and lose a point for each of your own shares that is not issued. Lose one point for each empty space on your harbour board, and gain one point for each gold coin you own. Elders and leftover fish and wood are worth nothing. The player or players with the highest score wins. And that's how to play Nusfjord. We hope you enjoyed this video. And if you find this video useful, please help us by hitting that like button. Subscribe to us, you can also hit the meeple in the corner to do so. And hit the bell icon so you'll know when we have new videos. You can also follow me on Instagram for my board games journey. Comments, suggestions and feedback are all welcome, so please leave that in the comments section below. Thank you for watching and until next time!